Hi, Dr. Paul Hader, Master Herbalist here. But today I'm gonna to dress a little more relaxed and uh, we're out here in the garden. This is a bunch of Malabar spinach we have growing on, on the wall. This is all edible. This is an edible wall. <laughs> and so I'm gonna be talking about good old wheat. You know what I mean? That bread type of stuff. Uh, is it good for you or not? And there's a lot of different controversy about it and I want to cover some of that. Yeah, it goes back thousands of years. It's even talked about in the Bible. Wheat does, is actually talked about, you know, and breaking the bread and uh, everything is very, and goes back in all the spiritual texts actually uh, about wheat. And, but now we have a lot of uh, ch challenges because, you know, we have gluten intolerance, we have celiac disease, we have all these different things that are leading to major challenges with wheat and uh, gluten intolerance is not a happy thing because you know you end up with diarrhea and bloating uh, headaches feeling tired skin problem uh, depression even depression unexplained weight loss abdominal pain and on and on and celiac disease is an autoimmune disease where it starts break breaking down the lining of our gut and then it starts attacking the body in general. So it can actually take years off your life if you're a celiac person and keep eating wheat. Uh, wheat, spelt, rye, and barley. They're all uh, the, in the same group. You know, spelt is just another form of wheat. Uh, wheat, spelt, rye, and rye is another agent of uh, in the same family, and barley also. So these are all kind of lumped together in that. Uh, it's also wheat is sprayed with a lot of herbicides and pesticides these days. You know, I haven't eaten wheat in years because, you know, I have, a, you know, a gluten intolerance type of thing, celiac disease, probably. And I feel terrible when eating wheat in the United States. It's very interesting. But I go to Europe, especially we have a good friend that lives in near... Cologne in Germany, and we stay with him. I can eat the wheat there and not have a problem whatsoever. And I love their very hard, dense breads, very good. And uh, in Europe, you know, in the United States, or depending on who you read, celiac disease and gluten intolerance is anywhere from uh, from six to sixteen percent, or and sometimes I think it's really higher than that because a lot of people don't even know they have it and they just kind of put up with the symptoms. I think it's like 30 or 40% actually. And a lot of people don't know they have this type of problem going on. In Europe, the average for uh, having gluten intolerance is 1%. In uh, Germany, it's 0.2%. In Finland, it has a little higher, it's 2.4%. So there is a lot of difference depending on where you go and what, you know, what wheat you're eating. And nowadays, in the United States, we have a glu uh, interesting wheat because it's been changed so many times and hybridized. It has 300 times the gluten that it used to have many years ago. And that's very interesting. And also, our bodies don't know what to do with that amount of gluten. It really doesn't. And in Germany, they have gone back to a lot of these very you know, ancient type of grains, and they use that a lot. And they are very picky about what can be sprayed on uh, all your crops in general. Um, it's not the same wheat we had thousands of years ago when Jesus was breaking bread. There's no doubt about that. And this whole grain where he was breaking bread, they didn't, you know, take the, all the good vitamins and minerals off the outside oh, at that time. He didn't even know how to do it. So very interesting. And also you don't see as much gluten intolerance in Asian countries where they eat a lot of rice is very hardly common at all. And so very interesting. I find it, uh, we have something going on. You know, like I said, I feel fine when we go to Europe and I eat, you know, wheat. I have no problem with it whatsoever. Um, we go to Spain or uh, some other country. Uh, we need to discover what's going on here. Uh, wheat, like hot wheat, bread like this, the white bread. And this has a glycemic index of like almost 100 and really not good for diabetics at all. 
uh, whole wheat, organic breads would be the, the best way to go. And also, I eat, I don't eat bread at all as far as wheat bread goes, but I eat a lot of garbanzo flour flatbreads, also sorghum flour flatbreads and corn tortillas, those type of things are, you know, gluten-free and really do a great job. I've had a lot of people who were totally addicted to bread. I have one person in the family, actually. She's pretty short, but has gained a lot of weight, and she will come out right and tell you, you know, I'm totally addicted to bread. I can't let go of it. And she's got a, a bread and cheese thing also. <laughs> so it's one of those things that you might want to think about. Am I addicted to bread? And, you know, and it will pack the weight on. There's no doubt about it if you really let, keep it going. Um, personally, I like I said, I don't eat wheat. If you get along with wheat, I, at least I recommend that you eat organic and whole grain. That's really, really important. Uh, what's going on with wheat? I don't know. Uh, it's been about 40 years that I've known that I had a problem with wheat. And I at first just cut down on it. And then after a while, I just said, you know, I'm not going there anymore because it's really not good for me. And I don't enjoy being sick all the time and feeling bad. So I just kind of let go of it in general. Uh, like I said, if you want to be healthy and active and, you know, this, these numbers of gluten intolerance and celiac disease keep going up and up and up, whether it's because we have all the gluten in, uh, in wheat, spelt rye and barley, or whether it's because of the, you know, pesticides and herbicides, I really don't know. I'd like to have some answers about that, really. Uh, and wheat's not a bad thing as far as, you know, if you can eat it, you know, wheat is a staff of life. You know, it's been talked about for uh, thousands of years. Yeah, even Plato talks about it, Hippocrates, all these different places, people uh, in general talk about eating wheat. Uh, but now it's become kind of a monster. But I uh, applaud you if you can eat it and not have a problem because a lot of people have had problems and you know, it seems seems like it's going up and up and up and we're having more and more and more problems all the time. And I meet more people who have gluten intolerance especially and some of them that don't even know they have celiac disease or this is an autoimmune problem. It actually breaks down the lining of the gut and then after that, you know, the food particles go across the uh, immune system, it starts to attack it. And then after attacking that, it goes, what's that look like in our, <laughs> similar in our body? And it starts attacking other things in our body. So this is a real terrible thing. And then immune, autoimmune disease is the biggest disease in the world now. And I think it, we really need to, allow ourselves to see that it's really important that we uh, minimize some of these things that are causing us a lot of problems. And so allow yourself to partake of wheat if you get along with it. My glasses are going a little dark because it's really bright across the way. Uh, if you uh, in enjoy wheat and have no problems with it, good, great. If you do have problems with it, I recommend you cut it out of your life completely and enjoy some of the other flatbreads I talked about, the sorghum, the uh, garbanzo, the corn, uh, tortillas, that type of thing. And they will do your body good also. So have a wonderful day. If you feel like getting a hold of me, now we got a plane going over. Uh, my phone number is 831-869-9119. 831-869-9119. If you hit click more, my, uh, all my contact information is down below. My email address is drpaulhater at gmail.com. And my Skype is drpaulhater. And if you care to uh, do a consult, my consults are $50. That gives you uh, an hour or longer. Sometimes I do up to two hours with people. And you can do your husband and wife together also at the same time, at the same time for the same cost. And we can get it at the crux of what's going on with you and get you really healthy and make some changes in your life so that you feel really great and uh, also you get support for one full year also so you can ask me questions
So have a great day. Remember God. And remember, I love you.